Who Murdered Clarice? Written by Jack T. Chick. At 6.30 a.m. on a cold, foggy Friday morning, two people entered a side door. The crime had been carefully planned and the killers were waiting. The butcher did his ugly job. After all, murder was his business. Poor Clarice died a terrible death and was dismembered. All evidence disappeared. There was no funeral or gravesite. Beautiful Clarice was gone. The crime was shrugged off and forgotten because nobody cared. Unknown to the participants, someone was watching. His eyes were like flames. Only he could hear Clarice's silent screams. Those involved would stand before him, charged with murder one. Clarice's brutal death would be avenged. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Years later, Oswald Gilmore, M.D., ended his bloody career. He died a very wealthy man. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. It was now time to review the murder of little Clarice. What's the big deal over one lousy abortion? You've been charged with murder. Then who are these people? They were conspirators in this crime. Ah, uh, I was a Supreme Court Justice. Am I involved? Absolutely. Let's go. It's time to meet your judge. Surprise, everybody. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He will judge the world, the nations, cities, and every soul born on this planet because he created the universe. He knows our every thought and has watched everything we've done or said during our entire lifetime. Nothing gets by him. Before Jesus came to the earth to become a man, he was the one who gave the Ten Commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai. Jesus was the great lawgiver. Jesus Christ can be your most loving friend or the most frightening enemy in the universe. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, Jesus, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Dr. Gilmore pleads his case. I performed that abortion at the mother's request. It was perfectly legal. I worked within the law. Not within my law. You committed murder and sold Clarice's body parts. You devil. You sold her baby ears for $75 and I damn you to hell. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All involved came forth. The parents, relatives, doctors, and nurses, senators, congressmen, lobbyists, Supreme Court justices, and finally the presidents to give an account. I heard every excuse. Don't tell me, your great nation and its laws. I will judge all the nations and each one of you separately. God says all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. God, God told the prophet Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. Samson's birth was foretold by an angel. King David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't tell God they were only little globs of tissue. They were real live persons being formed in their mother's womb. Jesus loves the little children because he created them. But Satan loves to destroy children. Look at some of his techniques. In Egypt, Pharaoh gave an order that all Jewish baby boys were to be thrown in the river to drown, and it was done without mercy. Satan has murdered babies all throughout history. They have been sacrificed to all kinds of false gods, like Moloch, Baal, Kali, and to Satan himself. Of all the babies ever born, there was only one that Satan had to destroy at all costs. Behold, thou shalt conceive and shalt call his name Jesus. Note, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, who is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Word is God the Son, the Creator, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We know him as the Lord Jesus Christ. Prophets foretold the coming of Christ, who would rule the world from Jerusalem, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. That will take place at his second coming. But on this trip to earth, he came to die for our sins. Wise men from the east followed a star and came to Jerusalem to worship the newborn king. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. 
Herod's priests and scribes searched the scriptures to find where Christ would be born. O great Herod, it says he will be born in Bethlehem. Herod was afraid he would lose his throne. That child must die. Satan pushed King Herod to order his forces into Bethlehem to kill every child two years and under. This is known as the slaughter of the innocents. Warned by a dream in advance, the family escaped, taking little Jesus into Egypt. Satan had missed his chance to kill his deadliest enemy. When Adam and Eve rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden, the Lord cursed the whole human race by having their sin passed on to all of us. How do we stand spiritually before God? We don't. We're lost. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through the terrible death of his son, God made it possible for you to go to heaven. The blood he shed was holy and precious. This is the only way our sin can be washed away. Jesus allowed himself to die on the cruel cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever, that's you, believeth in him, should not perish in hell, but have everlasting life in heaven. The Lord was buried and arose from the dead three days later. So what's this got to do with abortion? Everything. What about Christian America? Sorry, but God no longer sees it that way. In the early days of America, the Bible was honored and people feared God. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Today, the Bible is considered a joke, and the fear of God is gone. Germany is rebuked for its past, but look at the new Holocaust. Every year, 45 million children are murdered throughout the world by abortion. Do you think God will tolerate this wickedness much longer? No way. He says in his word, the wicked shall be turned into hell in all nations that forget God. Not only does this bloody business destroy the child, but after the crisis, it has a devastating effect on the mother. Many go through depression and deep sorrow and feelings of guilt over the death of their babies. If you've had or ever been involved in an abortion, God will forgive you for this crime only on one condition. You must repent and be forgiven. All those aborted babies are in heaven, and if you repent, you'll see them there. Lord Jesus, I'm a lost sinner. You know what I've done. Please forgive me and come into my heart and be my Savior. God knows your heartache and pain. If you've repented, he has forgiven you. Jesus will soon return in the, and, is, and is furious over all this wickedness. The Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you'll miss God's wrath and receive his blessing instead. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And we'll meet some beautiful people up there, like Clarice. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.